Larry. Oh, now what is it? You know. Well, what I told you about on Thursday. Another time. I've got to get over to Hartford today and quick. Brother Kill is up in front of the beaks at the juvenile court. Yes, I, I forgot about him. Do you think he'll be all right? Sure, he don't need to sweat. First offense. But I really must have a talk to you sometime, Larry. Perhaps when you get back from court. Yeah, sure, in the espresso bar. Come on, and make it quick. Chick. Come on! Come on! Uh, so naturally, as you've only been in this locality a matter of weeks, this bench is only too ready to remand the case for you to make further inquiries about the boy's family and background. That's very good of you, sir. But I would like to tell you one thing, though, Mr. Phillips. In our experience, and of course that isn't inconsiderable, these acts of juvenile violence, well, they're not always a matter of environment and upbringing, and it's not always the fault of the parents. Oh, no. A lot of the trouble lies with the lad himself. No, I wouldn't argue with you there, sir. But I've had quite a few years' experience with a parachute battalion. And we used to take in a lot of young fellows of very much this age and type. And I do know that if we didn't give them a fair chance, well, a great deal more than a fair chance, we'd never turn them into normal, average, decent soldiers. And I'd have thought the same thing held true of civilians. Oh, yes, I think. Well, as you wish. Now, well, seven days be sufficient. Oh, yes, and thank you very much. The probation officer will make arrangements for you. Thank you, sir. Shall I push off? Yes, sir, I'll see you. Right. Oh, by the way, Good luck for Saturday. It's Manchester United, isn't it? No, we're playing the rubbers. Oh, well, as long as you beat them. <laughs> this uh, juve, juvenile delinquent of yours, you sure you want him back in circulation? Yes. Once I've started something, I'd like to go through with it. Well, there'll be a couple of papers for you to sign. I'll drop them in at the vicarage for you tonight. Yeah, all right, do that. Well, come in and have a drink. Only don't be late. I've uh, got the youth club. Thanks, I'd like to. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, ma'am. Yes? They told me to see you. Oh, yes, that's right. We're writing you a letter. You'll get it in a few days. Man, is she for real? A proper hot shot. And get them. A bunch of squares from Squaresville, England. You know something? They make me sick, Dick. What happened? Nothing happened. A lot of crummy, hairy talk from four old geezers sitting up at a table. Just like, what's my line? And then, old holy Joe from over the... I'm not here. Larry's bike. I saw it outside. Yes, he, he, he lent it to me. Tell him I asked for him, will you? Thanks, Curly. I'd do the same for you sometime. Mary's a nice kid. Why'd you have to? I know, I know. But you don't want someone in your ear all the time, do you? Or do you? across the vicarage. Sharp. Real sharp. You 
about my speed, too. Have you got a date tonight? Yes, serving out here at the youth club. But over there, church hall. Yes, it's not so bad. The vicar's got some pretty good new disc. You can rock if you want to. Ma'am, we're gonna rock, rock, rock around the church tonight. Sure, we're gonna great charge out of that. Do you have to be there? But I tell you this, Mr. Phillips is all right. He's different from the others, you know, with the colour. None of them reverence are different. Well, see, we go across there later. Jazz it up from a bit, maybe. Now, no trouble. No, no trouble. I want to thank the Reverend anyway. Spoke up pretty well for me today, he did. Hear what Curly says? No trouble. No bicycle chains, no knives. I must go now. What do you say? And he gets... Crocodile. Man. She's for real. Hello, Tommy. Good evening. Sir. Hello, Vicar. No, I think if he could get away from that little beast of a brother of his, he'd be perfectly all right. Big brother's a nasty piece of work, I take it. Oh, Larry Thompson's a real shocker. Yeah, he, he really qualifies for that word of yours. What was it? A, a, a jewel. Thanks. No, that was naughty of me. Potential juvenile delinquent. That's the correct term for your young man. I don't know why he's mine all of a sudden. I've only met him twice. <laughs> well, good night, Padre. Thank you very much for showing me around. And thank you for the strong drink. Oh, incidentally, would you like a lift next week when I call for your young Master Curly? Thank you very much, if it's not too much trouble. Well, she's rather small. Do you think you'll be able to fit in? Anything you can do, I can do. Yes, I must have been. I'll ask for that one. Yeah, all right, coming. Good night, Padre. Good night. Hello, Miss Peters. Hello, Hello Miss Peters. Has the vicar arrived? Oh, yes, he's arrived. And we think he's here to stay. Mm, he's dreamy. Get your shoulder on sideways. That's it. That's better. Come on, Pat. All right. Yeah. This way. Good, good. Yes, but get on down. Good. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, but use your knuckles. Don't hit with that open cup. All right. All right. Good, 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 good boy. Good boy. Come on. All you've got. That's it. Hard, hard, hard. Yep. Come on. All right. Not getting too hard. Come on, Wally. Now, you two, don't forget, not all this. Educated straight left. You've got to write as well, huh? All right, go on. And no black eyes. Hey! It looks as if you need this. Hello, Miss Peters. Missed you. Well, I've been trying to get the parish magazine up because it should be at the printer's by... Yeah, now, morning. watch his right, Wally. Watch it. Oh. I said watch it, not sample it. I'm sorry, the magazine. Well, it's just that it should be at the printer's by tomorrow. Now, that was lousy. Close your glove. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm with you, with you. Well, it's just that I was planning a new layout along the lines that you suggested. Yeah, well, I think it's time we lighten things up a bit. Yes, I suppose Father and I did get a bit stuck in our ways. Hello, Vicar. Vicar. Hello, John. You're, well, we'll talk about it later, shall we? All right, fine. Uh, perhaps when this is over. Hi, Vicar. Nice tricks. Oh, fine. Nice of you to come over. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, Michelle, when you've time, would you run over to the vicarage and say I shan't be in for dinner? Yes, sir, certainly. That's your down? Uh-huh. <laughs> hey. Hey, young man. It's all fixed for Monday. Thank you, Vicar, and uh, thank you for today, too. All right, it's all part of the service. But I'd like you to come and see me tomorrow. No, it's all right. I shan't preach to you and make you pray. Just want to sort out some of the facts. Thank you. Okay. Come on, Wally. Come on. That's what's 
be shimmy to a solid beat. I call her pretty, but she is too sweet. I kiss her once and then I take my feet. Outside on the street again, I wasn't born on a cold December night. Brought up in a shack. I've been a mean, mean child since the day I ran wild. And now there ain't no turning back. Not know how there ain't no turning back. <laughs> Go on, tuck it in. Quieten down a bit. And Michelle, will you take that message for me right now, please? Yes, sir. What's the matter? A bit of action never did anybody any harm. And look, Vicar, if you're going to rock, then you've got to rock. It's all right. I've nothing against rocking. Only take it easy, that's all. Nah, let's get out of here. This churchy stuff. Square with a round collar. They're a bunch of creeps and sissies anyway. Who are They're you calling of... names, then? Easy, Buster. Unless you want to play rough. You don't want your little friend's arm broken? Oh! It's better. Now listen to me. Officially, I'm a man of peace. But if you bunch don't throw down those ornaments of yours on the table there right now, I'm going to give myself the great pleasure of throwing you one by one through that window. And believe me, it's quite a drop. We were just going anyway. Yeah, sure you were going. But not carrying any of that cutlery to help you settle scores in a dark alley on the way home. How about it, fellas? Come and do what he said. Whose side are you on anyway? On yours, only you don't seem to know it. So the rest, it seems. That's fine. All right, then. Come on, up you get. Oh, come on. Let's get out of this smashing nightclub anyway before it's raided. Just a minute. You've forgotten something. I'll pick it up. you, Kelly? No contribution to put on the table? I wasn't carrying anything. Straight I wasn't. Good. I'd hate to start something on your behalf and then not want to finish it. Good night, Victor. All right. Well, there you are. What did I tell you? Come to the church hall and see life. Shall I? Yeah, oh, do. Anything is better than this silence. Or is it? Oh, Larry, Larry, where are you going? Ah, the show's over, so we're taking you with us, doll. Is it finished, Emily? They're dead. Strictly dead for England. Well, all right. I'm free for the rest of the evening. What are we waiting for? Let's take a hike, Mike. Come on, let's go to the pool. No, not for me. I'm not here. So long. Oh, here. Let me help. <laughs> Look at I can manage. You know, I love this room. Of course, it's very different from when we lived here. You've made it very charming. So, 
Artistic, if you know what I mean. Well, Howard has a fair amount of taste. I'll give him that. The way he gets it from, the Lord only knows. His father and I were just a couple of Philistines. Oh, really, Mrs. Phillips, you do say the most surprising thing. You mean because I don't behave like a clergyman's mother? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank goodness I don't, my child. I suppose Howard, the vicar told you what happened at the church hall earlier this evening. He raced in and out. Oh. Besides, he knows better than to discuss his work with me. To start with, I'm not the ministering angel type. And I'm terribly likely to say what I think at the wrong moment to the wrong person. And before you know what's happened, I've put back religion a thousand years. Cigarette? I don't. Aren't you lucky? Ghastly habit. At any rate, it's high time he got married. Most vicars have a house full of screaming, half-starved children by the time they're 30. Yes, I suppose they do. No, I'm not a possessive mother. I don't believe in them. I suppose you don't know of any eligible females. Oh, 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 more coffee? No, thank you. No peace for the wicked. The vicarage? Oh, yes, Howard. Oh, no, of course you can't. We quite understand. We are still waiting. Well, come as soon as you can. Goodbye. Howard, sorry, but he's been delayed. His girlfriend keeps him so late. Girlfriend? Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Mrs. White fell asleep on me again. Oh, dear. She never did there for those Mr. Peters. Oh, there you are. Obviously, I happen the right way with women. Oh, good night, Major. Good night, Vicar. Thank you for coming. But, Vicar, keep on trying. The old folk need you just as much as those young ruffians, you know? Right. Nice of you to say so. I'll keep trying. Good night. Good night. Keep the noise down. Fellas, not so much noise. Are you sure you won't have a drink? Quite sure. Mrs. Phillips, do you like me? <laughs> of course, Miss Peters. I... Oh, please call me Hester. And don't say of course like that. Because I like you very much. I admire you tremendously and envy you. Envy me? Your whole outlook on life. The way you think. Oh, I know you must feel I'm a... How old do you think I am, for a start? Oh, well, really, Hester. Well, go on, tell me honestly. No, I will not. I've always found that whenever I've been asked to guess people's ages, I'm so terrified of saying the wrong thing that I go to the other extreme and say something quite ridiculous. I'm 30. Oh. What's wrong with that? Oh, let me do that. You thought I was more. I really hadn't even begun to think about it. Oh, but you had. Everyone does. But I suppose 30 is quite old, really, for a girl still not to be married. Oh, I'm sure some nice young man will come along at any time and pop the question. Oh, oh one did once, ten years ago. It was very romantic. We were up by Longwood. Of course, that was before they built that awful new town. And you didn't accept him? Oh, yes. 
Yes, I accepted him. My father didn't. You mean Mr. Peters didn't find him suitable? Hmm. You see, my father expected such a lot of me. When my mother died, he made me take such an active part in parish affairs, and then... Huh. It's funny. I know exactly what Bellington thinks of me. The old vicar's daughter, the local do-gooder, Sunday school teacher without a sex life. They're quite right, of course. But it needn't have been like that. If my father hadn't been so ill, I... I'd have gone away years ago. Years and years ago. Oh, I'd have gone away, all right. Hester, 30 really isn't old, you know. It is when you feel as I do. You don't know how I dread the feeling of becoming a dried-up old spinster. Full of frustrations and loneliness. You see, I really despise that sort of person. Oh, that's him now. Excuse me, Hester. Hello, darling. Still hitting the bottle, I see. <laughs> you look awfully tired, young man. A bit. I've told Michelle she can go out for the rest of the evening. Uh -huh. But she's left everything in the kitchen. Oh, just a cup of coffee, please, darling. I'll make you some fresh. It won't take a moment. By the way, Hester's still waiting. Oh. Can't you see I'm tired? I had to crawl upstairs to bed. Oh, all right. I suppose she's not a bad sort, really. If you could see the smug look on your face. Martyr about to be thrown to the lions. Strictly out of quo vadis. Yeah, you're quite wrong. That's my expression on Easter Day when I'm counting the collection. <laughs> oh, coffee woman, will make it hot. Hester. Miss Peters? Hello. Hello. Terribly sorry to kept you waiting. I hope you haven't been too bored. Well, of course not. Your mother's an awfully sweet woman. Oh, I'm not about sweet. She's mad. Mad as a hatter. We usually lock her up first Sunday in Advent and let her out till Christmas. <laughs> Sit down. Well, let's see what you've cooked up to the unsuspecting burgers of Bellington. Nice, nice. Of course, I could put the acknowledgments on another page and the list of advertisers to the back. You know, what I really ought to do is to read through what you've written before we discuss layout, isn't it? Well, that would be a help. Yeah, and I wonder if we could get in something about youth club activities, such as they are. You mean Vicar Quill's teenage gang rot, fire hoses and tear gas to be installed in the church hall? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Does this worry you? No, of course not. I love the smell of tobacco. It's such a man-about-the-house sort of smell. Yes, sir. I suppose it is. Tell me, Miss Peters, I, I want to know what you think. What do you make of young Thompson? Larry Thompson. Hmm. Howard, I think that boy is evil. Really evil. Oh, steady on. Likes to show off. He's a bit of a troublemaker, but I wouldn't say evil. Throwing Michelle around with her legs like that, it was really indecent. Oh, come on. Go up to the swimming pool to see plenty more legs than that. Oh, you know that that's quite different. Anyhow, I hope you won't let him go to the club anymore. I thought the object of youth clubs was to attract the Larry Thompsons of this world, not keep them away. You forget I've known him since he was a child, and I tell you, Howard, if you treat these people like that, they'll just laugh in your face. Well, I think I'll survive that. You see, I think that this boy and the others like him, I think they need help. All the help I can give them. It's as simple as that. Hey, keep it quiet. Shh. Quiet! Here, look at me, I'm here. Here, mommy, blow. Hey, stand clear, darling. Larry, do you think you ought yeah, to? Yeah, sure, why not? Give me one, please. Please. Ask him not to make so much noise, will you? Shh. Goodness, how fast this place is growing. The job would have been too much for father, even if he hadn't got sick. You're certainly going to have your hands full, coping with all this. <laughs> yes. But only if I can manage to make some sort of sense with the youngsters. If we don't get hold of them, and 20 years from now, you can shut all the churches, and people like me will be out of a job. Oh, I think you'll make sense all right. I hope so. You see, these lads of 17 and 18 today, they almost earn a man's wage, and they want to prove that they're men. 
But they don't know how to accept through violence and showing off. Yes, I know. And the trouble is that they resent all advice from anybody over 30. How can anybody that old possibly understand what they feel? Uh, you, you think of us that way, Hester, you and me. Just a couple of crummy middle-aged squares. I may be, but you're not. I've seen the way they look at you. In a funny way, they respect you, just as I do. Only, of course, not in a funny way. I respect them, too. In fact, you know something? It's a regular mutual admiration society. <laughs> Murder. I haven't run into you before. Because I've not been here very long, hmm? Straight from Sexville, aren't you? Why do you have to use that funny American talk all the time? I mean... What's funny about it? The gang like it? Well, I think it's silly. You're a nice boy. You shouldn't go around like you do. How do you mean? Well, always making troubles like you did tonight. My father is very strict on anything like that. You don't know what having a father is till you've had a load of mine. He's a ruddy terror. When he's on the warpath and reaches for that belt of his, and then I'm halfway down the road. Larry, you speak so funny things, and so quickly. I don't understand. You mean your father hits you with a belt? No, not anymore, he don't. Our Larry's learned how to keep out of his way. Curly, poor Curly. He didn't even dare come here tonight. Went straight home. He hits Curly with a belt? You little bother? You're quite something, Michelle. I'm quite something. What? You're for real. You're... You're beautiful. Oh, you speak so very nice sometimes. Me? So very, very nice. There's been no one in Bellington worth speaking like that to before. No one worth bothering about. And now... Sent back in the morning. Oh, that's all right. I can walk over. Uh, would you like a drink? I think there's something in the house. No, no, thank you. I must be getting back. Well, good night, then. Good night. Hester, it is you, I hope. Oh, hello, Father. Oh, dear, I do hope I didn't wake you up. No, no, I was reading. You were much later than usual. I was a little worried, that's all. Oh, Father, I've, I've never spoken to you about this before, and... Well, it's nine and a half years ago now, but Peter Burton, you remember? Well, when you said that I shouldn't marry him, I always felt a certain bitterness inside me, even... Yes, dear, my dear. Oh, but it doesn't matter now. It's all over. And, uh, you see, I've suddenly realized that, well, there was a reason for it all. And all these years that I've been helping you to run the parish. There was a reason for that, too. So that I could help someone else someday to do the same thing. And, be a part of their life, too. You mean Howard Phillips? Mm -hmm. Yes. He's not married, thank heaven. And, well, a vicar does need a wife. And, and I certainly do think he likes me. Oh, well, anyway, there's no one else who knows the place or the people as well as I do. It's way past your bedtime. Go on. Upstairs. Sleeping. Oh, Hester. I do hope everything's going to be all right. Why shouldn't it be? Good morning. My dear early one. Good morning. I suppose she got you to give her a lift back. Yeah, 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 that's right. Did she attack you? She was. Not that you'd have known if she did. You're hopeless. I don't know what you're talking about. Esther's a very nice girl and I quite like her. And thank you for ironing those. No, 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 no. Now you'll get paint on them. Oh. I'll have to pack them in the bag. I suppose you realize she's after you. After me? Oof. She wouldn't repeat everything I say. 
Chester is in love with you. Oh, 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 oh. Pardon, madame. Madame, uh, these uh, swap flackers. Swap? Uh, where do I find him? Oh. oh, you just ask Mr. Price, the grocer. He'll give them to you. Yes. Soap flakes. Thank you, madame. Don't you think she dresses somewhat uh, racily for a girl who's just going out shopping? You have an evil mind. Mrs. Browning for the agency says she comes from a very nice family. I wish I did. Come from a nice family, I mean. Brute. Now, Hester. Oh, Hester. Yes. I think it's rather sad. <coughs> Thirty and very frustrated, sex rearing its ugly head. Oh, madam, have you no respect for my cloth? Not a drop. You ought to know the facts of life as well as I do, and if you don't, then you ought to go around a bit without that dog collar of yours and learn all about them. What's all this in aid of? Chuck me that rag, would you? Has it ever occurred to you that Hester might imagine she'd make an ideal vicar's wife? Yes, I'm sure she would, so long as it wasn't mine. Howard, if it ever comes to telling her that, be careful. Oh, be so careful how you do it. Hester, the woman's called. Hell hath no fury, though hell sounds more like your territory. Forgive me trespassing. Oh, go on with you. And if I don't see you before I go, make lots of gold. To hear is to obey. And remember, Hester, if it did happen, it wouldn't be all her fault. Number nine, that's hard, Phillips, Just for the home side. Just a little bit more quietly, Hester, please. Yes, Father. It's rather unusual these days to find one in a professional football team. Who's He's the match between, my dear? Uh, well, long his long team is the one with white shirts. I don't know about the other. Admirable. Concentrating on only one of the sides must make it so much easier to follow. Now, neat pass down the line, and Farmer has moved over to take it. Looks dangerous for Rovers. No splendid interception by centre-half Williams. Now Rovers attack, and Peters is beaten in the air, and Mervyn makes a wonderful save. Corner to Rovers. Well cleared by United. Right away, upfield to Webb. Two Rovers defenders in a tangle. Outside right, Smith to Brown. He shoots, and Phillips diverts it into the net. He scored, he scored. Yes, Phillips has scored after two minutes. I thought for a moment that he might have yes, been offside right at the start of that movement. Father, but didn't you hear? Field. He just scored and the first two minutes. What do you make of that? I make it that in 90 minutes play, he should score exactly 45 goals. Oh, nice Father, do stop it. Good, defenders, oh! Arse, it's gone wrong. Hello, good morning. Oh, good morning, Vicar. I was watching out for you. Wanted to save you having to get out of the car. Well, that was thoughtful of you. Getting in is the problem, though. Good game on Saturday. It's not bad. I thought you were offside, of course. Yes, so did about four million other people on the telly. And shall I tell you something? So did I. What? I know what you're thinking. No, no. Men drivers, women drivers, it's all the same to me. Liar. All right, I'm a liar. I didn't realize you were the soccer star. <laughs> Crowd didn't seem to think so in the second half. <laughs> no, but it's useful in your job, especially with the youngsters. You should cash in on it. <laughs> Wear shorts and football boots and church instead of a surplus and cassock. A smashing idea. <laughs> no, but seriously. Children worship athletic heroes. You're useful. A lot more useful if I could swivel my hips and howl like a broken down hound dog. <laughs> oh, that's a passing phase. Won't last. Not even five years. Maybe. Still, I sometimes wonder if we're doing any good. Well, we're not doing any harm, surely. Oh, is this my unfinished business, that one? Yeah. Come on, Curly! Well, we can always find out. evidence proves that this lad was a member of a gang who were involved in an orgy of this window smashing. I know we didn't catch any of the others, but there's very excellent reasons why this lad should be sent to an approved school if it's only to act as a warning. 
And I maintain, sir, with deference to your great experience, that if he is sent to a Borstal, this boy is on the way to becoming a proper criminal. I don't know him well, but I would say he's well worth his extra chance. I know many of them aren't, but I would say this one is. It's a very difficult position. We're anxious to try to help. Now then, if you can... If you could persuade within ten days the shopkeepers who are involved to withdraw the charges, and if you were to personally act as surety for this lad's behaviour in the future, then this court may be able to quash the charge. Well, thank you very much, sir. And thank you, all of you, if that's in order. Well, it's not, but uh, no matter. Uh, next case. Oh, Mr. Phillips. Uh, nothing to do with this case, of course, but uh, Saturday... Uh, were you? Offside. Hello. Hello. Oh, let me take that. Thank you, dear. It's astonishing the amount of rubbish one takes with one, even if you're only going away for a week. Oh, you better leave that, Michelle. We can manage. Well, I and you better run off if you want to catch that bus of yours. Well, thank you, Madame. I'll take that, Michelle. Bon voyage. Bye bye. Well, that hair. Don't you think a dress is a bit. Oh, well, it's her day off. She can wear what she likes. Within reason. Oh, but Hard won't stay alone in the house with her, will he? Well, you really, Hest. But Hard will be alone tonight. What will he do about food? He'll manage. Rustle up something for himself, I expect. But I could pop over and cook him a meal. Oh, good gracious. I wouldn't hear of it. As a matter of fact, Howard rather likes foraging for himself. Have a good time. Goodbye, Hester. Take care of yourself. No, no, this'll do splendidly. I've an enormous shopping list and I'd better get on with it. Goodbye, I'll see you before next week. All right, goodbye, Miss Lacks, and thank you so much. How's it going? Hello, sir. How's today? Everything all right for you? Yes, thanks, can't complain, except about the size of the congregations. They'll grow with time, sir. I hear you had a spot of bother up at Church Hall the other night. Those Thompson lads, I imagine. Oh, they're all right. Wasn't really much bother. Yeah, you saw them off nice and proper. Commander, they say, was he? Well, paratroopers, actually. I was only a padre, remember? Well, they make them jump just like all the others, don't they? Oh, don't yeah. fancy it myself. <laughs> well, nice to see you, Vicar. Anything you I can do to help? All right, sir. Goodbye. Bye, Joe. Hello, Mary. I'll have, uh, oh, two pounds for those apples, please. And uh, give me half a dozen of those oranges. Are they nice? Hello, what's the matter? It's nothing, Vicar. Nothing at all. Must be something. A pretty girl like you doesn't cry for nothing at all. It's nothing, really. Would you like to tell me something about it? I can't. I might be able to help you now. I, I'm much cleverer than I look. Can't. Can't tell anyone. Well, you know where I live, and if you'd like to come along any time, you're very welcome. Well. Leave it at that then, shall we? Hello, Mary. It's you. C come on in. Oh, what a horrible night. Go on in. There's a fire in there. There's no one in here. Go on in. Oh, that's it. There's nobody here. Take your coat off and then sit by the fire. Feel better. What about a cup of tea, eh? I think it's still warm. Yes. No? Do you mind if I do? Come on, come sit down. Well, it's a long way from where you live. And you wouldn't have come all this way unless you had something very important to tell me, would you? Hmm? If you won't talk, I'll have to. It's obvious that you're in some kind of serious trouble, so let's get to the bottom of it. Have you killed anyone? No. Oh. Oh. That's a relief. All those tears, I thought it must be at least that. 
Have you, um, have you robbed a bank? Of course not. Oh, we're getting on. You haven't killed anyone, you haven't robbed a bank. Well, it's probably something quite simple, then. You gonna have a baby? Yes. Yes, I'm going to have a baby. Well, good heavens. Is it as tragic as all that? You've seen a doctor, I suppose. I went into Carsford. I didn't want anyone here to know. Does the young man who's responsible know about it? I've tried to tell him. But somehow I can't. He doesn't see me anymore. Well, perhaps I could tell him. Who is it? I can't. Do your parents know about it? Oh, I, I, I couldn't face Dad alone. But he's always been quick-tempered. I don't know what he'd do. He could even, even kill Larry and... No. Is it Larry Thompson? Mary, you've got to tell me now. Is it Larry Thompson? I shouldn't have told you. If Larry knew I'd told you. He hates you. <laughs> says those horrible things about no, you. No, let's not worry what Larry Thompson says or thinks about me. It's you we've got to worry about. You. You and your baby. I don't know. I don't know what to Take do. Take it easy. We'll work out what to do. It would be better for everybody if no. I was dead. Mary, I'm not going to have you talking like, like that. Hell. Mary, stop it. I don't want to go on. Stop it, Mary. I was Let's... better off if I was dead. Mary, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I was dead. Can't. You like can face it and you will. Can't face it. Yes, you can face it. Don't tell you. I don't know what to do. If you do anything to yourself now, you'll be taking another life as well. Do you understand that? Do you understand? I suppose so. All right, then. Now, you're going to swear to me. You're going to swear to me before God to put all thoughts of death out of your mind. Now, you swear that. to your home after supper. Will that do? Well, Dad goes to the pub at 9.30. I'll be there at 9. OK? Thank you. Now, you leave it to me. I'll have a talk to your father, and then you'll have to do the same. Oh, I don't want anyone to see me like this. All right, come on. You follow me. Down to the kitchen. What are you doing here? Oh, my, you look worried. Uh, no, I'm all right. Well, I brought you some food, some eggs and things. I thought I'd get you something to eat. Oh, that's very good of you. You shouldn't have troubled. Oh, well, I'm quite sure you haven't bothered to get yourself anything. Yes, it's all right, Hester, really. I've, I've had oh, a father, snack. I told your mother I'd be here later in the day. Uh, really, I, I, I wish you wouldn't. Here, just as I thought. Well, it'll have to be an omelette. It's most thoughtful of you, but I've got an appointment. Oh. Not your old Mrs. White again. Go on, sit down. It'll only take a minute. No, really, I mustn't be late. Well, I'm sure whoever it is won't mind waiting. No, oh, Hester, I oh, wish you wouldn't get... Sit down. You know something? If I were your wife, I'd see that you were properly looked after and not left alone like this. Hester... I... Oh, Howard. <laughs> Hester... Oh, my dear girl. Oh, I'm so sorry. I... I don't know what to say. I think you'd better go, Hester. Go? You 
you want me to go? By which door? I, I don't know what you mean. By that door? The one that your last caller left by? Mary. just on my way to see her. Larry did everything. The doctor, the ambulance... Now, wait a minute. What do you mean? Larry? Do you mean Larry Thompson? Yes, Larry Thompson. What's he got to do with it? Well, we were on the seat together. You know. And Mary came across and there was the accident. You and Larry were together and Mary saw you. Is that yes. what you're saying? All right, go on in. Mrs. Williams, you did splendidly. Just splendidly. I'll try and come in and see you later this afternoon. Oh, thank you, Vicar. Goodbye, Vicar. Come on, love. Sad business, Vicar. Yes. <coughs> Funny how Mr. Thompson can manage to give Larry a hand. He can never find the time when young Curly's in trouble. I wouldn't have said that the young Larry was in any trouble this time. Besides, the whole world knows who's the apple of Bill Thompson's eye. Still no accounting for taste. Come along, Michelle. Goodbye, Sergeant. You know where to find me if you want me. Right. Move along there. Larry, the vicar's outside. He wants to see you. Well, what's all the early chair want? I don't know. Here, take it. What's it all about? He didn't say. You may not want to keep it. Come on, go and sit down. Do you mind if I smell? Quite a place you got here. What's the matter, Vicar? Staring at me like I was dirt. Uh, just looking at you, wondering what makes you tick. What you're thinking about after that inquest this afternoon. Now listen, I've wasted enough of my time on that blooming inquest already. I'm getting fed up with all this natter. Yes, the inquest was quite a strain, wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. I didn't mind, not really. It would take more than a flippant coroner to scare me. <laughs> I've got to hand it to you. You're a hell of a fellow, aren't you? All the same, I don't think you told them quite all you know. Told him what I saw. That's all they wanted to know. 
What else could I have told them? You might have told them that you were responsible for the girl's death. Say that again. I said you could have told them that you were responsible for Mary's death. All right, we'll have witnesses to this. Michelle! Michelle! You're wasting your breath. Michelle's out. All right, your mother, then. I'm not going to let you get away with this. There's no one in the house. If you want to have witnesses, get your little friends over from the coffee barn. I see. No. I don't need any witnesses. I always could take care of myself. Was it a shock to you this afternoon when you heard that Mary was pregnant? I get it. Now you're trying to say I've been mucking about with Mary. You've got it in one, my friend. That's exactly what I'm saying. Now listen to me. Sit down. Mary told me that she was going to have a baby, and your name slipped out. She'd say any name. But she said yours, and I believe her. You've got no evidence. So if you was so blasted sure of yourself, why didn't you speak up today, eh? Mary was dead. It was cruel enough it had to be mentioned at all that she was going to have a baby. You saw what he did to her father and mother? You saw that, didn't you? Yes. Well, I just want you to know that you killed her as surely as if you'd stuck a knife in her back. That's a bloody lie. She, she was frightened and, and she ran in the road. Oh, no. It wasn't fright that sent her running out into the road. It was seeing you, the father of her unborn child, with another girl in your arms. You're enjoying this, aren't you? I know why you've got it in for me. Because I'm not one of your little fan club. Stupid bunch of kids who think you're great because you kick a football about on a Saturday afternoon. Well, not this one. So long, Vicar. I haven't finished with you yet. There's another thing. You're going to stay away from Michelle. I suppose you want her for yourself. Oh, you're lucky for you. You're not big enough to hit. Now, look here, mister. You can't stop me seeing her if I want to. I think I can. What could you do? Tell her the whole story and the police. It doesn't frighten me. No? I think I know something it does. What about your father? Yes. Yes, I fancy he's the one to deal with you. Now, get out. So that's how it's going to be, eh? All right. What's the hurry? I told you to get out. You frighten of someone catching you with you alone in the vicarage, is right, that it? Then you stay if you want to hear me talk to your father. People might think things, mightn't they? Especially when I tell them how you got me here when you knew there was no one else in the house. It'll be your word against mine. Only I'm going to get some real evidence. about you, bloody young kid. Damn you! Have you gone out of your... What do you think you're doing? Take your hands off me, you foolish swine! What do you think you're playing at? Come here, you idiot. Have you gone off your head? Leave me alone! Oh, Miss Peters! Larry, what on earth's the matter? He tried to... Larry, Larry, what happened? I've got to know. I can't tell you. You've got to. He tried to... He tried to interfere with me. Lying. I'm not... Hester! Oh, let me get out of here! Hester, for God's sake, listen to me. The boy's lying. Oh, no, he's not, Howard. Yeah, Hester, what? Hester, will you listen to me? Hester! Would you go? And if it's Mr. Phillips, would you tell him that I'm not well? I can't possibly see him. Oh, good evening, Mr. Peters. I'm sorry to disturb you this time of night. I wonder if I could have a word with Hester. I'm afraid my daughter's not feeling very well. Oh, I, I shan't keep her a few minutes. I'm sorry, Phillips. It's not possible. She doesn't want to see anyone. I can't let you in. You may as 
well tell me. You see, Hester's a fine woman. All her energies have been directed to the parish, to the community, to myself. So much so that perhaps it's been to her own disadvantage. But I can't tell you how upset I am about this, this, this difference that has arisen between you. My daughter stubbornly refuses to confide in me. Phillips, Phillips, I do beg of you to tell me what the trouble has been. <coughs> oh, dear. All I can say, sir, is that I'm not a married man, which makes me a fair target for anybody. I see. Yes. I think I know another way of putting it. Someone was very much alive to the fact that the vicar was a single man. What do you mean, Father? Well, you pretty well told me that you wanted to marry him. Yes, but there was more to it than that. I think I understand you, my dear. You offered yourself to him. The unfortunate thing was that he refused you. Who told you that? I've just been to see him. And he said that? Not exactly in those words, my dear. In fact, he was most reluctant to discuss the matter. He was very tactful, but I... But I think I understood his implications. Oh, Father, you'd never understand, never! Do you think I'd resign from all my parish duties, from the Sunday school, from the youth club, from all that I've made a part? Or rather, that you've made a part of my life? Just because a man turned me down in marriage. <laughs> My dear, <laughs> dear child. Oh. Of course, you're quite right. How it did turn me down. But after the little scene I saw, I know he'd turn down any woman alive. Isn't it? And isn't the word of your own daughter good enough for you, Mr. Peters? Yes. Of course, I've always been taught to keep my mouth shut about that sort of thing. Yes, I appreciate your silence, Larry, but this is a most serious charge, and for a man in Mr. Phillips' position, the implications are most, most disturbing, to put it mildly. Thank goodness I can take care of myself. That's all I can say. I mean, some other young fellow, well, stands to reason. Huh? I've read the Sunday papers, if you know what I mean. You trying to tell me we've got one of them down at the vicarage? And he tried his tricks on you. Dad, will it be all right? Get out, Curly. This is no place for you. I said get out. Go on. You didn't mention a word about all this to me. I told you, Dad. Uh, I didn't want to make any trouble. The lad's motives are quite correct, Mr. Thompson. Nobody wants to make trouble, but sometimes it can't be avoided. Yeah, you're right. Well, you mean the police? But you wouldn't do that, Dad, would you? I've got to. But if I had my own way... Chief, take it easy, Bill. Take it easy. Before you get all steamed up, have you seen the vicar? Have you asked him yourself? Listen, if I've got new... Now, do you want to know that, Bill? Look, as a friend, I'll walk over with you, and we'll try and sort things out, all right? Yes, yes, part of what you say is true. I, I did have a struggle here with Mr. Thompson's son. And Miss Peters did come in and see the end of it. Only she didn't see that the boy deliberately staged the whole thing. He deliberately wrecked the room. The, the whole thing was a frame-up. And Miss Peters fell for it. She made the perfect witness. Aye, the only witness, sir. And a reliable one at that. You'll forgive me for saying so, sir, but you new to us. And well, we've already had certain talk about this girl, this French maid here. Oh, now look here, Sergeant. First is the boy, then is the girl. Have you got anything else? Oh. Miss Peters now. We know her. We think she'd tell us the truth. And I mightn't, eh? You see, it's my word against one of the most respected women in Bellington, is that it? That's how it looks, sir. And what do you want me to do? Get up on my hind legs in the pulpit and shout out to all Bellington that it's a lie? Then what did you mean dragging my son over here in the first place? Yes, Vicar, you must have had a reason. Oh, yes, yes, I had a reason, all right. And I'd hope to keep it to myself. All right, if you want it. Your son, Mr. Thompson, 
was responsible for Mary Williams' pregnancy. Listen, sit down. Sit, sit down. down. How do you know this, sir? Because Mary came here herself the night she was killed and she told me. Did anyone else know? No. Pity. Pity? Why? Well, sir, she comes to see you the night she was killed. You're alone in the house. Can you prove it? That's all. Prove it? Do I have to prove every action in life? Yes, you do. No, 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 sir. But after all, this wasn't the first time this sort of thing had happened. What sort of thing? Now, come on now, Sergeant. What sort of thing? Well, you say this, you say that, sir. No one else seems to know about it. But you must admit it's rather strange that you didn't say anything about it until Bill here came to see me. That's right. Mary spoke to me in confidence as a priest. I couldn't tell anyone. And after she was dead, it was better left unsaid. Could only have made trouble between her family and Mr. Thompson's here. It will be, sir. Yeah, now, look here, Sergeant. Will you listen to me a minute? The coroner's inquest decided how Mary died, not why. And I knew. And I accused your son, Mr. Thompson, right here in this room, of having put her in the family way. Now, did you or didn't you? I didn't, Dad. Honest, I didn't. And why does that vicar say you did? He had to say something. The first thing that came into his head. Not the first thing that what? He had to cover himself. What else could he do? And why should a priest cook up a story like he that? He had to. What's the matter? Mum, tell him. Dad got him up against the wall. And lying was his only way out. Tell him, Mum. It's you that's lying, you little... You know the taste of this. You know what I said if I ever caught you lying again. You know, don't you? I'm not telling no lies, Dad. I didn't say anything. I didn't start no trouble. It's a terrible thing when you can't take the word of your own son. What about her, then? What about the Peters woman? Do you think she'd lie for me? Do you? Ask her, Dad. Go on, ask her. Before you start taking it out on me. All right, then. That's all I need to know. No, Thompson, wait. Now, Hester, are you sure you're not mistaken? Howard Phillips' entire reputation lies in your hands. If this goes any further, his whole life is ruined, wasted. Now, I ask you, before God, put all personal issues out of your mind. Are you sure you're not mistaken? I can only tell you, Father, what I saw with my own eyes. Right. No, wait, Thompson, wait! Better have a pack of those kippers, please. And uh, get your boy to deliver them before lunch, will you? I'll drop them in myself, sir. It's all right. I'll collect them as I come back. No man of that war, no man of that something you had to eat, sir. It can't it very often happens like that. Maybe your tummy's upset, no? Cold. Are you 
take it away. What, sir? Oh, take it away. It'd probably make me sick. I'm sorry, Michelle. Forgive me. I... I don't feel well. Sir, do you want me to call for the doctor? What makes you think he'd come? the gesture anyway. I'll be glad when the regular fellow foolers come back again. I don't know when that'll be. I'm surprised to see you here. Well, that paid for the job done, huh? Right. Come on, we'll hold the service anyway. At least no one can cough during the sermon. Vicar? Vicar? First time the old lady's been here in years. Maybe I'm late. Mrs. White, what you... I'm sorry we are so late. Give us a mix-up over the taxi. Mrs. White, what are you doing? You wouldn't be here at all. You ought to be tucked up in bed. Matron, how could you let her come? She insisted upon coming. Insisted. And you? Oh, I'm quite good at insisting, too. Nesta! Miss Peters! Please, Miss Peters, I must speak to you. Look, please, Hesta, I've got to talk to you. Not out here, somewhere we can talk privately. Now, please, you've got to do this. You're making me very conspicuous, Mr. Phillips. And yourself even more so, if that were possible. Come here, Tommy. You mustn't do that. Come here. I'm very sorry, sir. Michelle. 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 Oh, Vicar, good evening. I've come to take Michelle away. She's upstairs packing. I'm sorry about this, but my agency is responsible to the parents. And seeing how things are. So you see. Got the supper crying, talking, sleeping, walking, living up. Got to do my best to be the desk that she's living up. Such a roving eye, and that is why she satisfies my soul. Got the one and only walking, talking, living up. I say just for you to lock her up in a trunk So no big honk can steal her away from me Got myself a crying, talking, sleeping, walking, living dog Got to do my best to please her just cause she's a living dog Such a roving eye and that is why she satisfied my soul Got the one and only walking dog, living dog Charlie. 
can I have a word with you, Mr. Thompson? Well, over at that vicarage of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere we can talk quietly. I've got nothing to say to you. Nothing you'd like, anyway. I appreciate your feelings, Mr. Then Thompson. Keep the hell out of my way. I just so? want to oh, talk good. this but matter over say, sensibly. If you weren't hiding behind that dog collar, I know the sensible thing I'd do. I'd take you outside and give you the sort of hiding that might do you some good. I don't think that'd do hey, any good. Hey, chance, Bill. Oh, Bill. Oh, Bill. No, 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 gentlemen, please, not trouble. I don't think that'd do any good to anybody, but I want to talk to you outside just the same. Go on, show him, Bill. All right, come on. Now, listen, I just wanted to talk to you. Alone. And in any case, I've no intention of starting a fight with you. <laughs> I knew it. What did I say? Look, can't <laughs> we go somewhere without this stupid mob? Oh, You're going a mob, well, anyway. Words, you know I can't hit a parson hiding behind a black shirt front. That's a pretty cheap remark, Mr. Thompson. I know you didn't mean it. No. You're right. I didn't. No. Oh, wait a minute. Take it easy. I was just trying to... You are for it, mister. I keep... I keep trying to explain to you that someone's going to get hurt. Only people never will... <laughs> never will listen. Now, anyone else want to go? All right. Well, you'd better take care of your friend. Howard, do you? Hello, Mother. Anyway, you're here. And I'm very glad to be back with you. There's no need to look at me like that. Sorry, darling. I suppose you've heard about it all. So you've got one of those. Anonymous, that's what they called it. They didn't spare the juicy details. I bet they didn't. Huh? Well, it's my turn to write the details. Who to? The bishop. Why? Why? Because I've no alternative. But I've made a fool of myself. Let myself get involved in a cheap brawl. Oh, what's worse, I enjoyed it. If I could, I'd have and the daylights out of the whole grinning stupid lot of them. Hell of a fine clergyman that makes me, doesn't it? Wonderful, gentle, tolerant example I set around the place. Worse than a bunch of hoodlums I'm trying to clean up. Perhaps I want to carry a bicycle chain, be like every well-dressed clergyman, carry a clerical cosh. And after that long speech, tell me, did you... did you win? It's a matter who won. Did you? Oh, I knocked him cold, but I wouldn't call that winning. What else would you call it? Don't laugh at my mother. Don't laugh, but what I'd call winning is something a devil of a sight harder. Something they tell you in all the Sunday school books. Just turning the other cheek. That's what a clergyman preaches. That's what a clergyman's supposed to do. And they... I'm not very good at turning the other cheek means that I'm not a very good clergyman. Which means that I never will be. So it's as well I found it out right now. Listen to me now, Howard. And listen carefully. I'm not a church girl, as you know. Perhaps not even a Christian in the accepted sense of the word. But I like to think I understand what my son represents. Whatever people say or think, however much a story is distorted beyond recognition, however much the Larry Thompsons of this world are allowed to poison other people's minds, however much you judge your own limitations, let's face it, your inexperience. At least I know your God understands the hurt you've suffered. If he doesn't, he must be a very narrow-minded God.
you're still going to write that letter? I must. If the bishop receives it, he'll only have one alternative. I'm in his hands. What I don't understand, what I can't believe is why Bellington should accept such a story. Oh, didn't you know? Larry Thompson had a very reliable witness. Her reputation's beyond reproach. A woman? Hester. I'm not disturbing Mr. Peters. No, my father's in hospital. He's had to have some more treatment for his arthritis. <laughs> well, Hester, dear, things have certainly been humming since I went away. Oh, I suppose it was inevitable. The only thing I blame you for is the clumsy way you did everything. I don't think I quite understand yes, it. Yes, it really was clumsy. If you'd handled everything better, not hurried everything so much, you might even have pulled it off. Mrs. Phillips, it's quite useless for you to stay. Now, do let's sit down, Hester. You're talking to another woman, not to one of those helpless males who can't discuss anything important or private without staring out of a window or looking confused. I don't wish to be rude. Oh, you can, my dear, because I'm going to be extremely rude to you. You see, you don't fool me a bit, not one little bit. But why should I want to fool you or anyone? For one very obvious reason. You see, I know you had your eye on Howard. And if you're as honest with me as I know you are with yourself, you'll admit that it wasn't because you wanted to be able to carry on with all your good work. In fact, far from it. You simply wanted Howard to make love to you. Don't you think you'd better go, Mrs. Phillips? There's no good that can come from all this. I don't agree. Anything would be better than the way things are. No, you wanted to go to bed with Howard. And I don't see anything wrong in that. But when he grew scared, poor dear, and behaved not in the way you wanted him to, you know the details better than I, you turned against him and did everything in your power to do him harm. Oh, Mrs. Phillips, this you must believe because it's true. I never wished to do him any harm. And yet you've hurt him as much as it's possible to hurt any man. How could I possibly want to hurt Howard? He's everything in the world that I admire. He's everything in my life that I want. Oh, yes, Mrs. Phillips. I love him. Then why? Why allow this hideous slander to be believed? It's the last thing on earth I want. I know I did wrong to give it a meaning, but how could I possibly know that... Well, that a little bitter remark made here in the privacy of this house could grow and grow until... The whole of Bellington used it in judgment against Howard. I think I understand. For I'm sure you've suffered too. But Hester, are you going to let it go at that? It's you they all believe, not Larry Thompson. Oh, they believe what they want to believe. Neither Larry nor me. No, Hester. You are the only person who can really help now. And I think Hard's worth helping, isn't he? You say you love him. Is this what you call love? All right, Mrs. Phillips. All right. But you'll have to tell me the details. The exact details of what really happened that night. Hello, Larry. Come on in. 
Evening, miss. Take a coat off. Is everybody out? Yes. Father's away until tomorrow. Here, I'll take this. What's all this about? I'm sorry I had to ring you at the coffee bar. I hope it didn't embarrass you, but I had to see you tonight. That's all right. Bar was dead anyway. Bunch of creeps, if you ask me. Help yourself to a drink. Oh, thanks. Can I fix you one? Yes, I'll have one. What do you have? Same as you. Sherry? Fine. Just tell me. What gives? Why did you get me here tonight? Well, this business at the vicarage, I... I'm afraid it's going to end up in court. Let it? I just wanted to make sure that we've got our story straight. Mine's straight enough. What's your trouble? Well, I didn't really want to say anything. Just tell the truth. You can never go wrong if you tell the truth. Yes, but I... Oh, I get it. I think I dig you now. You mean you might possibly understand one of my problems? Sure. You got yourself all steamed up about this vicar, but it didn't work out. I could have told you were chewing concrete. Anyway, you played your cards too fast. All from the top of the pack. You seem to know an awful lot about cards. I know a lot about lots of things. Lots of things people don't know about in Bellington. Believe you me. Yes. You're quite a boy. Sure. Tell me. I was just thinking of that bunch of kids back at the espresso. Oh, what about them? They could see me now. Oh, but surely you wouldn't want them to. I mean, if someone else came in here, someone who knew you, you wouldn't want to be seen alone here with me, would you? Why not? I don't know. It's just that things have a way of looking strangely different when somebody suddenly charges in, don't they? I don't get your number. No. But you did get somebody else's, didn't you, a little while back? And in the same way, if I really wanted to, I could make things look pretty bad for you, too, couldn't I? Have you gone crazy? Oh, no, not really. This is a perfectly innocent meeting. There's nothing wrong with you being here alone with me. Unless, of course... What the hell? That's how it started, wasn't it? Oh, yes, and then I believe the flowers came next. I get it. I get your little game. You're quick at catching on, aren't you? That's the way you framed Howard Phillips, isn't it? And you think you can fix me? Do you think anybody's going to believe all this? They believed it before, didn't they? Oh, no, you don't get me that easy. You haven't let me finish. This came next, I think. Aren't I right? And then a... Why, you bitch! Take it! Keep away from me! Pardon me, no... Larry, take your hands off me! I may not want to now. You wouldn't dare. Oh, wouldn't I? You started this, didn't you? You thought you'd get away with that corny old trick a second time. When I finish, you won't want to tell anybody. Because, because... Because what? Because what, Larry? Oh, all right, I'll go. Unless that's Peter's, will you say I'm busy? I don't want to see anybody. Oh. Well, the vicar's not seeing anyone. But I suppose the law's different. Well, uh, I'm here unofficial like that. Well, how am I to know that? Come in, Mr. Thompson. Thanks. I'll go into the sitting room and I'll tell the vicar. Howard! Howard, you're wanted. Well, is it Peters? No, the law. Sergeant Harrison. Nothing I could do about it. All right, I'll see them. I haven't done those plates, I'm afraid, darling, you'll have to. Morning. Morning, sir. Well, well, whatever you've come for, I hope you'll make it short. I have a lot to do. Uh, we uh, hoped as how you wouldn't mind uh, if we came up to see you, sir, to sort of apologize, as it were. I don't mind anyone at all coming to apologize. Anything else? No, uh, no hard feelings, I think. As far as you're concerned, none at all. Your car outside. Oh. I take it that you may not be leaving us after all, sir. I take it quite wrong, Sergeant. I'm leaving as soon as I can get things arranged. Howard. Sorry I was late, Phillips. Had a puncture in my tire. 
quite an epidemic around here lately. Well, if you don't mind, I have a few private and professional matters I want to talk over with Mr. Peters. You're sure, Vicar, there's nothing... Absolutely sure, thank you, but I'm grateful to you for coming, Mr. Thompson. Goodbye to you. Goodbye, Sergeant. Mr. Peters, I want to know if you do me a favor. If I can, naturally. I'd... I'd like you to take over the vicarage, if you would. Act as my locum till the bishop sends a replacement. It'll be a matter of a few weeks at the most. My boy, you... You mustn't make such a... such a hasty decision. No, oh, it's nothing hasty. I've had plenty of time to myself, you know, these last few days to think in. You see, the, the people in this town have asked me to... They want me to tell you that they're deeply distressed about this business. They want you to forgive and forget what's happened. To forget? If you can. You mean they actually want me to stay? Oh, yes, they, they want you here, my boy. Believe me, they want you very badly. They do? Well, unfortunately, I don't want them. People who'd stoop to the cheap tricks that they've done. Who'd write the filthy, obscene letters that they've written and never the guts to show their face or sign their name. Oh, no, sir. I don't want them. Let someone else take on this flock and he'd better watch out or his sheep will tear him to pieces. Now, excuse me, I've got some packing to do. My boy, you must believe me. I know you've suffered, but... Oh, not as much as you'd think, probably. But you must learn to forgive. You must learn... You must learn to forgive these stupid, blundering people, like myself, for instance. That's but... just it. I can't forgive. I don't want to either. That's why I've got to get away from here. And before I say or do something, it would... make a farce of the cloth we both wear. I still say you should come and talk quietly to me before you take such a... Uh, I... Look, I know you're trying to help me, and I appreciate it, believe me. But at the moment, I... I... I can't be helped. At the moment, I've lost all faith in myself as a priest. I have nothing but contempt for these people here, so how can I stay in this place and preach what I can't even begin to practice? That God is love. No, oh, no. Naturally, I'll act as locum for you, but won't you give the bishop and yourself a month to see if you change your mind? It would only be postponing the issue. Goodbye. Goodbye. You haven't finished yet. Well, what's it now? Hester. Hester, how did she get in here? I smuggled her in. Well, you smuggle her right out again. Then. No, you don't, young man. If only to go in and say thank you very much for having sorted things out. Oh. It was quite something she did for you. Almost a fate worse than death. Well, I expect she thoroughly enjoyed it. Get on. And you can tell her from me she ought to do it more often. It suits her. She's looking very pretty this morning. Hello, Miss Peters. Hester. Hello. I heard what you said to Father, so the speech I'd prepared isn't of much use any longer, except to say that I'm sorry. Really, truly, deeply sorry. And I... I hope you can forgive me. I'm sorry, too. I realize I must have hurt you also. You did. Only I asked for it. I said I heard what you said to my father. Would it help? Do you think you might change your mind if I offered to clear out instead? Oh, Hester. You've lived here all your life. Where would you go? That's not the problem. No, neither is your staying here. Look, it, it's not a question that I can't take it here any longer. I'm afraid of being an Aunt Sally all over again. It, it's simply that I'm not cut out for this sort of life. I, I, I'm not the right sort to be a vicar. How do you know? You haven't given yourself much of a chance to prove it, have you? No, I'd be better off in the army as a padre. I, I can always go back there. Well, how about all the kids in the youth club? How about all the other two were going to drag in from off the streets and out of the coffee bars? What about them? Oh, those boyish illusions. I've lost them. I tell you, those kids need you. No, they, they don't need me. They need someone like me, but uh, anybody could do it. Your father, for instance. Well, he 
he's my own father, so I'm the only one who can say it. But considering the way the people around here have behaved these past few weeks, and that goes for me too, his own daughter, I'm not sure that he really did such a wonderful job after all. It's too late for me to change my mind. But it's a terrible pity we didn't get to know each other earlier. I agree. But then, shyness is a terrible affliction. Oh, good heavens, that probation officer. You go and get him. Well, I we can't. We've got on time. Look, we're terribly late already. Oh, I see. Look, will you explain? Tell her we're leaving. Oh, pay no attention. But he can't. He's got she to says you can't. Court. You have a very morning. important meeting yes. at the juvenile court. Yes. Ask, ask her to come in. I can I tell her what to do. Understand. Howard! What is it? It's no use. She says she's stuck. She can't get out of the car. Bobby and Vigo, we've just got time. I've got your unfinished business in the back. Well, if I do come, will you promise to bring me straight back? Yes, but we are late, you know. Well, will you get on with the packing? Here. Lucky she turned up when she did. Tipped the scales. One man against three women. He never had a chance. Now, you leave those cases alone. Nothing's changed, nothing. All right, dear, all right. Pay no attention. Put them where you like. All right. Here, let me take those books. <laughs> you know, there's nothing wrong about that young man of mine that a good woman won't cure. But what I've heard of your recent carryings on, you'd no longer qualify. Well, I, I could always reform. Not too much, my dear. Not too much. Berserk. Why? Get one out of your... Don't you think you're doing it? Take your hands off me! It was the beginning of the trouble. Serious trouble. From which arose a serious charge. Oh, Miss Peters. Miss Larry, what on earth is the matter? They tried to... Yeah, Hester, what? Hester, will you listen to me? No. Oh. I'm a man of peace. But if you bunch don't throw down those ornaments of yours on the table there right now, I'm going to give myself the great pleasure of throwing you one by one through that window. And I wasn't born on a cold December night, but I'm in a shack. I've been a mean, mean child since the day I run wild, and now there ain't no turning back. Not know how there ain't no turning back. These are the people involved in a serious charge. What is the reason behind it? And what is the truth? <laughs> The whole truth behind the damning accusation. You offer it, uh... Anthony Quayle, target for hideous slander and scandal. Sarah Churchill as Hester. Put all personal issues out of your mind. Are you sure you're not mistaken? I can only tell you, Father, what I saw with my own eyes. Irene Brown as the mother, shocked by her son's dilemma. I know you had your eye on Howard. And if you're as honest with me as I know you are with yourself, you'll admit you simply wanted Howard to make love to you. Lovely young French star Lillian Bruce as Michelle, the pretty provocative maid at the vicarage. Andrew Ray as Larry Thompson, fast with a flick knife, flash with the girl. Take it! Keep away! 
Yeah. 